<laughs> Hello, brave, wonderful soul friends. Welcome back to another Conversations with Kristen, that beautiful part of your day where you explore human consciousness from the inside out. Today I want to talk about empaths and what it means to be an empath, what's happening to create the experience of being an empath, and what we can do about it if this is something that you resonate with the experience of. So it's estimated that approximately 93% of communication has nothing to do with the language being spoken and everything to do with the nonverbal cues that are being emitted from our unconscious body. And so this got me thinking, what happens when two people are near each other and there's no words being spoken? Is it still 93% of communication going on even without direct contact, even with no words being said? So this is kind of my growing theory in a neurophysiological way to explain, you know, experiencing life as an empath. So that we're all, every human being on the planet is emitting energy through the consciousness and the neurophysiology that's, that's going on. We are energetic beings. Physicality might be the way we're experiencing stuff, but all of this is vibration. This is the vibrational frequency of a finger. This is the vibrational frequency of an eyeball. And because of light waves and sound waves, we have sight and you know we, we hear things and you know everything is some kind of vibration. And so we're all emitting some form of a, of a vibration. And you can kind of feel this, like if you're in a scenario and someone walks in the room, a lot of times there's an energy shift. And if there's someone who's like really outgoing and really dominating and like, yo, what's up? Party has arrived. You can like feel that energy even before they're engaging. Like they walk in a room and the energy of the room shifts. And so we all have different ways of experiencing this. Some people are more um, like they, they don't they, they don't experience it dramatically. It's a it's a subtle thing that they might experience. Um, and some people, it's it's a little more dramatic. It's a little more obvious. Sometimes it's even something that can be felt in the physical body, not just like sensed perceptually. Um, and so everyone's emitting some kind of a vibration because that's that's what we are. And we're we're vibrational creatures. Our consciousness is vibrational. Our neurophysiology is vibrational. And if 93% approximately of communication has to do with unconscious aspects of our body then even if there's no direct verbal contact, there's still communication happening even when people are just passing by one another. And so empath, you know, it's, you can look at it as like being very empathetic. Like if someone shares a problem with you, for example, do you have sympathy for them? Do you have compassion for them? Or do you have empathy for them? Those are three very different experiences and each one pulls you a little bit closer to what they're actually experiencing. Sympathy, you're pretty far away. You have a good soft space in your heart, but you're pretty far away from what they're actually going through. Compassion, you're a little bit closer. You, you feel for them a little bit more personally. Empathy though is you actually feel what they're feeling. And part of this has to do with the mirror neurons in our brain, which is a really magnificent neuroscientific miracle, neurophysiological miracle. We have mirror neurons in our brain so that our neurophysiology actually starts to reflect the neurophysiology of others so we can connect with them. It's pretty, pretty miraculous, pretty profound stuff. So everyone experiences life differently. We all experience ourselves differently. We all experience interacting with the world differently. and. Um, of course, interacting with people we intimately know versus going to the grocery store and inter you know, interacting directly or non-directly with complete strangers. It's all different experiences, right? So let's take this concept though. Empaths are people who experience things very deeply and they're very sensitive to the energies of others. And I'm not saying sensitive in a derogatory way. Like, oh, you're so sensitive. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Let's wipe that connotation out the window. Sensitive just means you're in tune with it. It means you're aware of these energies that other people might not be aware of. You experience them in a more direct way. And so when you're an empath, <laughs> you can experience the energies of others where even those other people might not be aware of their own energy that that's being experienced. And so 
it has to do with the unconscious awareness of the unconscious energies of people. It's kind of a nice way to sum up what it means to be an empath. You experience life very deeply. When you feel something, you're not just feeling an emotion, you're feeling an emotion. You experience life deeply. And this is a beautiful thing. And it can hold a lot of potentials for superpowers. But they have to be harnessed. And until the superpowers are harnessed, it can actually cause some difficulties. And so here's one example. You go to a party and you're looking forward to being around people, but instead of engaging, you just get overwhelmed. And instead of having fun, you just become exhausted. One potential explanation of infinite possibilities, but one potential explanation is that you are experiencing the energies of other people and having difficulty experiencing your own energy and using your own energy to connect with others. Instead, you're just bombarded with the energies of other people. Another example is you go to a grocery store and on the way there, you're amped, you're confident, you're feeling good about life. You go to the grocery store, you go through the store, you get your things, you check out, you go to your car and you're just like, oh my God, I feel like taking a nap for a million years. <laughs> That's another example, because while you're walking through that, that store, you're here focused on you, where you're going, but your unconsciousness is absorbing all the energies of all of the people around you. So those are just a couple examples of what happens when you're experiencing life as an empath and you have not yet learned to harness your superpowers. And, you know, Part of it has to do with neurophysiology. Part of it has to do with the energy of our consciousness. There's a lot of different perspectives on it. So if you're experiencing life this way, please know you're not alone, you're not crazy, and you're really awesome and you have superpowers that you can tap into. They just need to learn to be, you just need to learn to harness them, that's all. But being aware of it is the first step because it might just seem like something else. Well, that you dismiss or maybe you judge yourself for or whatever. So just being aware of these energetic tendencies within you is a really great, awesome, spectacular first step. And so once you're aware that this is an aspect of the way that you experience life naturally, then you can kind of take some steps to harness your superpowers and be there for yourself in, in deeper, more dynamic ways. And so a couple things that can be done. One, make sure you're restoring your energy. Make sure you're taking time for you. And this could look like a really nice, big, long self-pampering when you take a shower or a bath. It could look like having really good, solid daily rituals so you begin and end every day by pouring love into your being. Whether it's you know a five minute meditation or like a 20 minute, something you do to just be there with you and for you in grounding love. That's really important. You can do mirror meditations, you can go for a walk, you can frolic out in nature, you can do a million different things. It doesn't have to be any one thing, but as long as you're investing and pouring love into your being, it's really gonna help. Because the more you can be grounded in your energy, the more you'll have this immunity to the energy of others, and the more you'll be able to harness your superpowers so you can consciously direct your energy and guard against energies of others that you don't want to allow into your neurophysiology or, or consciousness. So make sure you're investing in yourself. Another great thing to do is spend as much time as you can out in nature. Maybe this looks like sitting in your yard or going for a walk or going for a hike. Maybe you have to drive a little ways to get into some solid nature. Do what you gotta do. Or even if it's you know going for a walk where it's thick with houses but you're very consciously focusing on the trees and not looking at the buildings or the people. That can also work. You can also go for barefoot walks. Even if you have like a really small lawn, you can walk back and forth or you can walk in circles or whatever you need to do. Just connect with nature. It's very soothing. And, and part of that is because energy is also emitting a vibrational frequency, but it doesn't have all of the stories or the traumas or the dysregulation or all the stuff that the energies of people can have. 
or the dense energies of man-made objects can have. And so taking time to just connect with the refreshing, revitalizing, rejuvenating energies of nature can be very cleansing, very healing. And even walking barefoot on the ground can uh, correct um, things inside of the body and actually bring deep healing uh, to, to, to different things, including like inflammation and stuff like that. Um, you can check out there's a really, really cool um, earthing documentary on YouTube you can watch for free. And they did a nice, a nice deep dive into it. And there's lots of other goodies out there, some information you can explore. So spend some time in nature. Spend time connecting with you and your own energy. Um, spend time investing in yourself with love. And my third recommendation, if you experience life as an empath, is to take time to hear yourself. And this can look like meditations or journaling or singing or painting or whatever. There's lots of different ways that you can create space to hear yourself, but make sure you're tuning in to your own voice and taking time to hear yourself and connect with who your energy authentically is. It's really important for a million ways that I could talk for hours about. <laughs> Um, it's really important to take time to just hear yourself and connect with your own voice, whatever that might look like. Uh, journaling and singing, um, painting, lots of different ways. Find a way that you can express you, your true self, your true inner voice, and then witness what your voice is. It doesn't have to be something you share with anybody else. It can be just for you. You don't have to let anyone else See, you know, see this. It doesn't have to be art or journaling or something that you share with the world. It can be something that you just shared for you, to you. So, being an empath, that's a very real thing. And I'm fascinated to explore the neuroscientific explanations for this. Uh, it's very fascinating. If 93% of communication is nonverbal, then what happens when we're not speaking? Is 93% of us still communicating with one another? My theory is yes. And we've got these mirror neurons in our brain and we've got all sorts of stuff going on in our neurophysiology and the miracle of our consciousness. And we're not just these physical bodies. This is the way we see ourselves and see each other, but there's a lot more going on energetically. And some people are more aware of those energies and can actually feel them inside of their bodies. And, um, oh, another, Another tip, or fourth tip, is to set up an energetic boundary. And so um, this is something that I've been working on for years and have really, really begun to, to master in a way. It's uh, very powerful once you can tap into this um, ability of consciousness. And if you watched my superpowers of subconscious parts video, this is a superpower of guardian parts. You can put up these energetic boundaries so that certain energies are not able to touch your consciousness or your neurophysiology. And you can just stay grounded in your energy and not allow the energy of what's going on around you or who's around you to influence how your consciousness and energy and neurophysiology are flowing because it's all energy. It's all energy. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's a really powerful tool. And if you ever want some healing journey guidance with any of this stuff, if you want help understanding yourself or knowing how to respond to yourself or knowing how to harness your personal power or knowing how to cultivate deeper self-love, or if you wanna identify what's happening within you to gain clarity on, on the experiences that you're having or, or know how to harness your power to cultivate deeper self-love while you're moving through and responding to these experiences um, with any of the topics I talk about, I would be honored to connect with you you through a consciousness consulting call where we share sacred healing space and I lovingly guide you through a process of understanding your consciousness better and harnessing your tools so that you can respond in a way that gives you all the power you need through your own gracious love to plant energetic seeds of transformation so that you can grow into the person that you want to be so that you can transform your consciousness into a home that you desire to live in and experience life through and so you can transform your life experience so it's a lot more beautiful to move through if you're interested in any of my healing journey services or my products i also offer a variety of healing journey resources please explore my links below for more information or you can email me anytime at artist of existence at gmail.com. I would be truly honored to connect with you and step in as a healing journey guide so that you have all the power that you need to allow your healing journey of life to become exactly what you desire for it to become. And so 
if you're experiencing life as an empath, the first step is to recognize it. And the second step is to really invest in yourself and pour into your own energy. And the third step is to start harnessing your superpowers so that you can be intentional about not allowing other energies to influence you. I love you. Thank you so much for joining Conversations with Kristen, that beautiful part of your day where you explore human consciousness from the inside out. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm grateful that you're on the healing journey that you're on. I'm grateful that you're exactly who you are. I'm grateful you're exactly where you are. You're exactly where you need to be. And the best is yet to come. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. So keep going, soul friends. I believe in you infinitely. I am cheering you on. Have a beautiful and blessed day, soul friends. Namaste. Namaste, soul friends.